Hey guys, so today's video is going to be a try on first impressions wear test of some new makeup that I recently picked up from Sephora. So let's go ahead and just jump right into it and get started. I will show you guys everything that I picked up pricing, some info about the item, and then we'll go ahead and apply it. And then I will, you know, do a wear test. And at the end of the day, I will check in with you guys and let you know how it performed. So the first thing I want to show you guys that I picked up is the new NARS Natural Radiant Long Wear Foundation. I have mine in the shade L5 Fiji. This foundation retails for $49. Next item I want to talk about is the Urban Decay Drop Shot Mix-In Face Oil. This one retails for $34. This is something that you're supposed to be able to mix in with your foundation. You guys know that I am a huge fan of mixing oil with my foundation. It is super helpful if you have a dry skin. And I just think that it does something to the consistency of the foundation. It just helps it apply smoothly and doesn't look as cakey. So when I saw this product, I was very, very much interested in trying that out. I want to see how it holds up to my two ounce bottle of organic cold pressed pure jojoba oil that I paid around like $12.99 for on Amazon. $34, $12.99. Let's see if this one is any different or worth it. Next item I have is the Park Avenue Princess Chrome Paint Shadow Pot. This is a new launch from Tarte. So these are supposed to be um, shadows that you can apply with your fingertips. So this one shadow alone is $22. We will see if that is worth it. Um, when I was in the Sephora store recently, I did swatch some of those and they were really intense. So I'm hoping that that is an awesome shadow. And then last but not least, something I am super excited for is the new Fenty Beauty. I just want to make sure I get the name right here. These are the Matte Moiselle Plush Matte Lipstick. Sticks. I got mine in the shade Freckle Fiesta. So here is the packaging and the unicarton that it comes in. Um, I did swatch this just to kind of get an idea of the shade, and I am super excited to try this one out. So this retails for $18 at Sephora. So let's go ahead and get started, and let's go ahead and apply that foundation. So let's talk about the NARS foundation quickly. So on the box, it says, Meet NARS First Long Wear Foundation that looks stronger, stays longer with skin recognition pigments. Interesting. For the truest color match, and 16 hours of wear. 16 hours, that's a long time. Um, featuring our Skin Optimizing Complex, this contains raspberry, apple, and watermelon extracts for smoother, healthier looking skin. It says shake well, apply a small amount starting in the center of the face and blend outwards, which is pretty standard. One thing interesting that I noticed on this product is that the first ingredient is dimethicone. Now, dimethicone is common in most foundations, if not all foundations, but I don't think I've ever seen it as the very first ingredient. Maybe I have, but for some reason that's not ringing a bell. And then obviously we are going to be testing out the Urban Decay Drop Shot Mix in Face Oil. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply just the foundation to one half of my face and then the other half of my face I will apply it with the mix-in oil. To apply the foundation I'm going to be using my Delium tools. This is the 957 Precision, Precision Kabuki brush. You guys know this is my favorite way to apply my foundation right now. I dampen the brush and then I use it to apply. So I will take the NARS foundation. Let's go ahead and talk about the packaging quickly. This is very heavy. This is probably one of the most nice, sturdy glass bottle foundations I've ever held in my hands. Just to give you guys a closer look at the bottle. Take the cap off and it does have a pump. Let's go ahead and take one pump. I'm gonna put this on the back of my hand. Use the mix in oil from Urban Decay. I really need to get my hands on a glass palette. I mean, I don't mind using my hands, but yeah. Use a very small drop because I'm assuming that that's for like a full face. I'm going to add just a little bit more of the foundation. Dab that on. We will also test to see how concealer sits. All right, so so far this is looking like it might match. I am noticing though instantly that it is oxidizing pretty quickly once I put it on my skin. Now I don't know if that's because I've mixed it with the oil, but it is changing that a bit. 
So let me talk about the Urban Decay oil. It contains jojoba oil. It's got some soybean oil in it. It does say wheat germ extract. So I don't know if that will be an issue for people if you have um, a wheat allergy to your skin. So just be aware of that. It does say it does contain fragrance and peppermint oil. I can smell the peppermint in it, which is actually quite nice. So this foundation is blending out, I mean, pretty seamless, and it's a pretty high coverage. I would say that this is a very, very, very high medium to full coverage product. So that applied pretty quickly and smoothly. I'm just gonna dip my brush into the remaining on the back of my hand. As you can see, I kind of have a blemish right here on my cheek just to see if I can get a little bit more coverage on that and the redness. I'm not actually really obsessed with full coverage foundation. I actually prefer more medium coverage. For me, that's just what I prefer for my skin. I like to have a more natural look, like my skin, but better. All right, so first impression so far on this side, it applied seamlessly. I'm not seeing any caking. I'm liking the texture of the foundation so far. However, I don't know if the oil took away from some of the coverage of the foundation, but that's why we are going to go ahead and try that on the other side as well without it. The color seems to be matching pretty good. Let's go ahead and apply this to the other side of my face with just the product. I don't know, my skin is strange. I feel like every time I put any cream products on my face that it somehow always ends up oxidizing somewhat. And oxidization sometimes really depends on your skin's chemistry. So like the natural oils, the heat, all that kind of stuff can change, but I'm not noticing it too bad. I feel like the oil did exaggerate that a bit. I don't know if that will happen with all foundations or if it's just this one, but just a heads up, something that I noticed. As you guys can see, like this brush just makes anything blend out so easily. Like I'm already done blending my foundation. Like that's all it takes. And I'm still liking the coverage. I do feel like it's a bit more coverage without the oil in it. So I will say that. So first impressions, first things first with the foundation, I'm really liking the finish and the texture and how my skin is looking. I don't notice that it's caking or exaggerating any textures. It's not, you know, exaggerating my pores or anything. It looks really, really nice. The foundation doesn't really have a scent or anything to it. It's just sitting really beautifully on the skin. Let's go ahead and see how concealer sits on top of it. I'm gonna be using my Tarte Rainforest of the Sea Aqua Sealer. I love this concealer for drier skin days. I have mine in the shade Light Neutral. So let's just go ahead and see how this sits on top of the foundation. To be honest, you guys, I'm actually not a huge fan of putting concealer on top of my foundation right now. I feel like sometimes it can just look cakey and a bit much, but I know most people like to apply their concealer that way. So for the sake of testing out this product, I'm just gonna go ahead and do it that way, just to see how cream product layers on top of it as well. So it looks good, it's not moving the product around at all, it's not moving the foundation, it's sitting nice on top of it and it really doesn't look cakey or anything. So far, so good. So what I'm gonna do, you guys, I'm gonna finish up my face makeup and then I will come back and then we will play with that Tarte Paint Pot and then we will go ahead and talk about the lipstick as well. Um, I will be right back. All right, you guys, so I am back. I put on my brows, finished up my face makeup. I do wanna say so far that I am absolutely loving this foundation. I am not loving my hair. You guys just ignore that right now. In fact, let's take a time out about my hair. Leave me a comment down below. My hair literally goes almost down to my ass. Like I'm not kidding, it is that long, but I literally never wear it down. But at the same time, I'm too freaking scared to cut it. So here's where we are. I wanna take a poll, let me know down below. Should I just like chop it off short, just get something cute that I can put like those cute like loose barrel curls in it? Or should I just get it cut slightly shorter with some layers? Do I need bangs? What do you guys think I should do? Should I dye it darker? Cause my grays are starting to pop through, so I'm due for that. Should I put some crazy color highlights in it? Just let me know below what would you like to see me do with my hair and I will consider doing it. But anyways, back to the makeup. So I am loving this foundation. So far it has not settled into any of my lines. Most foundations that I use settle a bit into my forehead lines and I just accept that most just do it. Um, so far, looking at this one, 
it's just not really doing it. And it's sitting so nice on the skin. My brow's weird. It just looks really nice and powder products are just sitting on it so beautifully. I went a little heavy on the blush today in the contour, but whatever. So let's go ahead and move on. I really didn't put anything on my eyes. I just set them because I did use that concealer to prep them up for the shadow. But I didn't want to put too many powder, powder products on my lid because I want to test out this Tarte Paint Pot. So again, I have mine in the shade Park Avenue Princess. Um, here's what it looks like inside the pot. Let's go ahead and swatch it. Very interesting. Whoo, damn. That is crazy pigmented. <laughs> Holy shit. Okay, so let's go ahead and swatch it. So it feels very creamy. It's like a buttery texture and it's pretty damn intense and reflective. These are intended to be applied with your fingertips. So I'm gonna go ahead and dip into this and go ahead and put it on the lid. So I don't have mascara on or anything, obviously. So it's pretty, however, when you swatch it, it looks a lot more intense than it actually does when you end up putting on your lid, which is kind of strange because you think skin is skin and a product like this, whether you're putting it on your hand or your lid, that it should look kind of the same, right? Am I wrong in that? I don't know. Okay, now it's a little bit more intense. This is like ultra foiled. However, to be completely honest, I will say that you might be able to achieve something like this by just a standard foiled shadow and like using some Fix Plus. But man, that is, like, that is intense. I do want to layer it a bit. Let me go ahead and just pick up a bit more. Put it on this my other lid and see what happens. All right, so that's pretty cool. I mean, it's like, it looks like liquid metal on your eyes. I'm just gonna see if I can blend out the edges and see what happens if it blends. And you can buff out the edges of it, it looks like. However, it will take away from the metallic, so just be aware of that. You don't wanna go in over the entire lid, otherwise you're gonna lose that mirrored effect, but it's very pretty. Let's go ahead and try to drag it on the lash line. I don't know if I'll be able to do that because I don't think that this will apply well with a brush. Let me try it. Don't know how else you'd get it on the lower lash line without using a brush. I guess you could try to use your fingers, but I feel like that would be hard. Okay, so it does work. You can pick it up with a brush. Let me just zoom you guys in just a little bit so you can see it. So here's what it looks like on the eyes. Oh, before I forget, oh my gosh, you guys, I almost forgot about the lipstick. So the Fenty Beauty Matte Moiselle lipstick, I have mine in the shade, again, Freckle Fiesta. Let me go ahead and tell you guys a little bit about this. So this says it is an all-day color intensity, weightless matte finish. So that's all I'm really seeing about this. So I think it's supposed to be a comfort matte formula. That's what I'm getting from this. So let's go ahead and try it out. Here is what the lipstick looks like. So I did swatch this already, and let me swatch it for you guys again. The pigmentation on this is insane. So look at that, this is one swipe. Look how even that is. That is amazing. The packaging feels a little bit on the cheap side. I will say it's very lightweight. I can almost feel like if I move this a bit, the tube inside the container holding the lipstick kind of moving around a bit. So it's not very heavy. I mean, I do think the packaging is pretty. I like that it has like the reflective millennial pink type metallic casing. It's slim. It'd be easy to carry on in your purse on the go, but I just think it just feels a little bit cheap. But nonetheless, the packaging isn't everything. We purchase a product because of how it performs on the lips. So let me go ahead and put some of this on. Now my lips are super dry and cracky right now. Wow. So as you can see already, that is like, that is one swipe pigment. I didn't even have to go back and forth. Like this is like, that is pigmented. Holy smokes. Wow, that is quite the color, but I absolutely love it. The Freckle Fiesta is described as a terracotta type color, and that's definitely what it is. Um, I love that. These types of shades are my absolute favorite. I think that, again, if you have more um, golden, olive skin tones, that anything with an orange, yellow, 
type undertone to the lipstick like a terracotta or an orange red is going to be very flattering on your skin deeper darker skin tones the same thing these types of shades will look very beautiful on your skin i am loving this lipstick so so far i can say before i go and then i come back and check in with you guys i will say that i am loving the lipstick so far it went on beautifully it doesn't look dry cracky it's not settling into the lines on my lips However, it does feel pretty emollient still, and it says it's supposed to be a matte lipstick, so I'm assuming that this will dry down. So time will tell that if this does dry out my lips, if it becomes cracky, if it breaks up, we will see how it lasts throughout the day. I am loving the foundation. I'm not seeing a huge difference on either side as far as using oil and not using oil in this foundation, which is interesting because usually I find that in... Overall, foundations are pretty dry on my skin, no matter what they say, even if they're like radiant or whatever, especially this time of year, I find that I have to add an oil to my foundation to get it to look nice on my skin, but that's not the case with this one. Yeah, I'm not noticing a huge difference. In fact, so far with this particular foundation, I am leaning towards the side that I didn't put the oil in with it. There's that, and then the eye makeup is pretty cool. I expected something a little bit more intense. It is pretty, but again, we will see how this wears throughout the day. So right now it is 10 41 a.m as you can see the time 10 41 a.m i will go ahead and check in with you guys in probably about two hours we'll do like a midday check-in and then i will check in at the end of the day probably around like eight o'clock or something like that and we will see how this is wearing i will follow up with you guys shortly Hey guys, so this is going to be check-in number one. Let's see what time is it. It is 1.44 p.m., so I have been wearing this three hours now. So let's kind of go over how things are looking so far. Again, excuse my hair and this blanket that I'm actually wearing because it is literally like two degrees outside and it's freezing in my house and I've been a lazy piece of shit all day so I should probably clean my house or do something but anyways and nonetheless it is 1 p.m. I have been wearing this makeup for three hours now let's kind of go over some things so the lipstick is going hella strong so I have eaten breakfast I have been drinking water this really hasn't faded a whole lot, and that is impressive. It did dry down eventually, so it is quite matte, and it is fairly transfer-proof, I would say. I mean, as you can see, let's see, there's really nothing coming off on my hands at all. Um, so that is one cool thing that I have found out about this lipstick. The foundation is looking fantastic. It's not breaking up. It's sitting on my skin quite nicely. As far as a comparison between the side that I used the Urban Decay Mix-In Oil versus the side that I did not, I'm kind of preferring the side that I did not mix the oil in. I feel like I got a little bit more coverage without it, and I just kind of like how it's sitting on my face a little bit more versus the side that had the oil mixed in. Um, and last but not least, let's talk about this eye makeup. It is a tragedy. It is already breaking up. It is creasing. It's lost a ton of its metallic finish. It's not looking good. So I am curious as to how this is going to look when I check in with you guys in a few hours and do my final check-in. Final consensus right now as far as how this makeup is performing. So far so good with the exception of the Tarte, the Chrome Paint Shadow Pot by Tarte is already a total fail. We will see how it's looking in a few hours. I will check in with you guys probably after I eat dinner, um, a little bit after that. I don't have to excuse my nose. I'm a mess today. I'm literally a straight up mess. My nose is itching. My hair looks like crap. And I'm wearing this crazy, ridiculous jacket coat thing that I just got from Shein. I think that's how you say it, but it's pretty warm and it's cozy. I need some motivation. I need to go clean my house. I will check in with you guys in a few hours. See you in a little bit. Hey guys, so let's go ahead and do the final check-in. It is about 7.45 p.m., which means I have been wearing this for about nine hours. Let's just go ahead and recap on everything. First off, I do want to say that I am pretty disheveled looking, so please excuse me. I think I've done three outfit changes now throughout this entire day. I literally spent about five hours cleaning my house. As I said earlier, I felt like a lazy piece of shit, so I was like, I need to get off my ass. I need to do something, and so... Yeah, so this makeup has been through the war zone. So let's first talk about the foundation. I love this foundation. This foundation, I will have to say so far, 
might take the place of my Tarte Amazonian Clay Foundation. You guys know I love that one. I literally wear that every time you guys see me on camera. What I love about this one is the fact that it didn't break up and it never settled into my lines. Ever, ever, ever. Never settled into my lines. And what's nice about it is it actually looked like it sunk into my skin versus sitting on top of it. So it was like medium to full coverage, this like true to skin finish. So it wasn't super radiant, but it wasn't matte by any means. It was just like a real skin finish. And I absolutely loved it. In comparison from the side that I didn't use the, the Urban Decay Drop Shot Mix in Oil, which I used on this side, I didn't notice any difference the foundation ended up wearing the same. So as far as the foundation goes, A plus, I'm definitely going to be continuing to use it. I absolutely love it. The Urban Decay Drop Shot Mix In Facial Oil to me is a fail. And I, when I say a fail, not because it didn't do what, I, what it's supposed to do, but because of the fact that it's so expensive, it's $34, that it's really not worth it to buy that versus, again, just using the jojoba oil that I use with my foundation when I mix an oil in because that bottle is like $12.99 on Amazon. It's organic. It has one ingredient. There's no added fragrances. To me, it's just not worth it to spend the $34 on the Urban Decay oil when you can get the job done and the same thing done with the jojoba oil. Um, as far as the lipstick goes, I love the lipstick. I think it's honestly one of the best matte, like regular tube form lipsticks that I have ever used. It did not dry out my lips. It did not settle into the lines of my lips. And despite the fact that my lips were so dry, somehow it did not exaggerate that. Like it just, it worked beautifully. The color stayed on for a good amount of the day. I just got done eating dinner. So it all finally came off and it wore off kind of all at once, which is nice because if you are out and about and you don't think to touch up your lipstick and you're eating and you're out to lunch with friends, etc., etc., you can rely on this and it's not going to like break up and look funky or look weird on your lips. So the Fenty Beauty Matte Moiselle Plush Matte Lipstick is an A plus as well. The eye makeup is a tragedy the Tarte Chrome Paint Shadow Pot. It's a fail. It looks beautiful. It looks beautiful swatched and when you initially put it on your lid, but throughout the day, I don't know if you guys can see this, but it totally creased. It is nowhere near as vibrant. And again, I only had this on for about nine hours. Pass, not worth it. You can get the same effect by dipping into a foiled shadow, spraying it with some Fix Plus, some setting spray, some water, whatever, putting that on your lids and it's going to last much longer. It's not going to crease. It's just, it's just going to hold up better. So overall, I would not recommend the Tarte Chrome Paint Shadow Pot. All in all, I would say that this was a 50-50. We have two products that are amazing, one that was meh and one that was terrible. So leave me a comment down below if you tried any of these products or if you plan on trying them. Let me know what you think. Before you go, I sure hope that you will hit that subscribe button. You guys know that your support is so appreciated. That goes without saying. Give this video a massive thumbs up if you like it and you want to see more videos like this. Also drop me a comment below if you made it through this whole video because again, it was a long one and I love seeing who, I love seeing who actually Actually sticks around for the whole thing and leaves me that comment. I love you guys so much. I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Mwah. Bye.